the difference between a preacher and a pastor. Hey guys, Pastor Jeremy, I want to thank you again for tuning in to our podcast here at Riding the River. Uh, I got a special guest today, Mr. Ty Fitzpatrick. If you've been a part of Riding the River for the last two years, you've probably seen this ugly mug around a time or two. Uh, he is now the pastor down at God's Country Fellowship in Hondo, Texas, and we are super proud of him. We're super proud that he stepped up and answered the call that God put on his life. And he's here today. We're going to be discussing uh, the difference between a preacher and a pastor because a lot of people, they use those two titles interchangeably, and there is a big difference. Uh, and so I'm going to, man, we're just going to share our story and maybe how we were a little confused about what it means to be a preacher or a pastor. Yes, sir. Uh, so I want to thank you for being here today. I know it was kind of last minute and we got people going out of town and I was like, who's that sucker I can get to come up <laughs> you found and it. get in a podcast? And, and, and Ty said yes. Uh, uh, so he didn't learn his lesson the first time when he said yes. No, uh, no. And I just learned the subject matter just two seconds ago. Yeah, so. yeah. That's how we roll here, man. Holy Spirit <laughs> led. Uh, so... Man, my relationship with Ty, I remember uh, the first few times you showed up at Riding the River, and that was, we were in the old building, yes, sir. so, man, seven years ago? Seems like it. Yeah. I was trying to think about that on the way up here. I don't have a clue when it, it, was. it was. It had to have been 16, 17, somewhere in there. Yeah, yeah, it was a while ago, and I, I was super impressed with him because uh, of his beard, and uh, you could definitely tell he was a guy that spent a lot of time on horseback. Uh but he always had like these really deep uh, questions, and and I remember like it was a it was a double edged sword when I would preach because he was making a beeline up there to ask you some <laughs> some clarification on some things. But man, over the years, like you have really sharpened me as a pastor, and you've uh, challenged me and pushed me out of my comfort zone a few times to get deeper in the Word on some things that can be a little scary to some people, and. Uh, you know, we've had tons of conversations about those things. Uh, we did a couple of men's retreats together. Yes, and I and so I remember like you were you were like in and out of riding the river. I remember you were splitting your time kind of between a couple of churches. Yes, sir. And, and then we did this one's men men's retreat and everybody was getting up and introducing themselves and saying what church they came from. And I remember it was just like riding the river, riding the river, ride the river. And then Ty gets up there and introduces himself, and he goes, well, I, I ride in the rivers where I go to. And I was like, yes, <laughs> got him. And I, and I just, uh, and we've done men's retreats together. Uh, you filled the pulpit here. You were a lay pastor. You were slated to be an elder. You were the guy that we were praying about that was kind of revealed to us to be an elder, but then you got a calling to go pastor a church. And, and then... Uh, you know, we did ministry with you down there. We still do. Like, that's a that's a sister church to us. We love that place. And, uh, man, you've just been an incredible friend. So enough about me. Like, you you just kind of tell me how that calling came and, and and your response to it. Tell us how you ended up down in Hondo. Oh, man, that's a, that's a long story, really, because uh, I, I don't know what to do with my hands. You I know, mean, I, either. I, 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 you, normally when I'm preaching, I'm using my hands, so, yeah. so forgive me. But, uh, you know, I've done a little bit of everything. I was a fireman, horseshoer, and started shoeing horses when I was in high school and uh, got in the fire department and then did some other things, basically had my whole world ripped out from underneath me. Mm -hmm. And uh, really I got to a point after I started, I guess, recovering, I guess you could say, uh, I got to a point to where I was like, my way sucks, you know, and I remember I was actually horseback uh, out in uh, out in Mountain Home. We were catching some cattle, and I was praying. I was like, Lord, I'm, I'm done. My way sucks. Whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I'll be obedient. And that was pretty much the, the beginning of the beginning right there. That's when uh, I started harassing you. That's when I was starting to ask really the, the, the deeper questions and uh, – I used to feel like you and Jeff had a love-hate relationship for me. You loved that I was here, but you hated when I was walking to the front of the front of the uh, the church to talk to you. Pretty accurate. <laughs> uh, then uh, after that, uh, 
you know, I started getting more involved in teaching here and, and uh, teaching the Wednesday night service. And, man, I, I feel like I'm a natural teacher mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to teaching things. If I understand it, I can, I can pretty much communicate the meaning. And then uh, think about that times when, when you all asked me to be a lay pastor. And then after that, uh, I felt like there was no other place I needed to be. It actually uh, got to a point to where I didn't like going to work. Yeah. I didn't like, I, you know, as much as uh, I love playing cowboy, I, I felt like I was wasting my time horseback. Mm -hmm. You know, my horse... Horse I was riding at the time, I he only heard, he could hear the gospel only so many times, and he still wouldn't take it. So I figured it's time to move on. But uh, um, after after a certain amount of time, uh, I went and did some preaching um, in Smithville, and after visiting with them and it was talk about the calling, it was like, man, that's what I need to be doing. Yeah. That's that's where I need to be, and. Uh, so we prayed about it, went through the whole, the whole process of the hiring, the, the hiring process, and uh, I guess it was down to me and one other gentleman. And about that time, you know, there here it is at the, the cutting time, is when when Hondo come along looking for, looking for some help, and we stepped into that. And uh, man, it's been a, it's been awesome. It has been awesome. It's been scary. It's been. A uh, heck of a learning curve yeah. uh, to go from the, having the teacher or the preacher mentality to a pastoring mentality, which, like we said earlier, is is two completely different things. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. Can you can so like break that down? So how do you define that? Like, what's the difference between a preacher and a pastor? So a preacher, in my mind, is is simply someone who does that. He preaches. That's that's the uh, the guy that's called to stand on the corners or even go from church to church uh, to, to proclaim the gospel. Right. Where the pastor is uh, more of a, of a rancher or a herdsman or a shepherd. You've got a group of people that God has put under your care, so to speak, um, and uh, learning how to deal with the different personalities, learning how to deal mm. with with that and keep trying to keep the herd moving in the same direction or if anything keeping them all in the same pasture That's the way i like to look at it is as long as they're moving within the pasture we're good but as soon as they want to start jumping fences we got problems you know um so learning how to learning how to bring out the gifts in people learning teaching the people how to use the gifts in the ministry that god has given each each individual, because we all have, in my mind, we all have a ministry. We all have something that, that we can offer the body of Christ and then empowering them to do stuff and yeah. at the same time keeping them, keeping them within the boundaries. Yeah. yeah, so I, man, I know for me, like, uh, that was kind of a, a wake-up call, too. It's like there's a difference between a preacher and a pastor. And, like, the preaching, like, what everybody sees on Sunday is, like, just the tip of the iceberg. Yes, sir. And honestly, it's the best part, man. The preaching is the best part. It's the it's the day in and day out pastoring, uh, man. That's the gritty part of ministry that most people don't see or understand. And, and I'll admit this on camera and in front of Ty, but like, man, I had it pretty good because I was like eased into it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I started out as a youth <laughs> pastor yes. and then an associate pastor. Yes. But even as an associate pastor, man, like I would like preach and like wreck it out and be like, clean it up, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and then as a co-pastor, like still kind of that mentality. Yes. Uh, but yeah, man, like when you put on the title as senior pastor, like it changes. So I remember clearly like when you – we're going in, down there to, to pastor the church and I, cause you're so thorough, man. And like to be prepared. And I remember telling you, uh, Ty, you're as prepared as you'll ever be. I remember that. The rest of it, you're not going to figure out until you just step into that calling and step into that role. So what were, what were some of those things, uh, 
I mean, tell us a few that you were expecting and then like a few that kind of you weren't expecting. Well, uh, I'm going to start that off by the, the evening when uh, we were sitting in the office downstairs and, and talking with the, the men from Hondo, and then they agreed to take me on as an interim pastor. And when they left, you reached up and gave me a high five, like, yeah, great deal. And I remember my heart sinking like, oh, Lord, what did I just get into? Oh, yeah. I mean, it was like I was trying to act excited, but it's, I was like, oh, my gosh, what in the world did Wink. I do? Hoodwinked you. Hoodwinked me, yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I, I fell for it hook, line, and sinker. Uh, now, as far as, as the process, um, man, you know, nothing, nothing really st- – I know we ran across some problems. We had some some head button and and uh, some disagreements within the church. But I'll be honest with you, um, I really didn't feel the pressure that I thought I would feel. Yeah. And I remember my prayer uh, day in and day out was, Lord, let me just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Let me just keep. I, I believe in in where we're going and and what we're going to be doing here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that was that was my prayer, and you know, the, like the scripture we read a while ago about the about the Lord going out before us and and doing battle for us. I, I think, in a way, I really saw that that the as long as I kept moving forward towards what I believe God was calling us to do, the the enemies were falling before us. They were they were going to the wayside, and now uh, what I've noticed is the excitement within the congregation. The, the encouragement within the congregation of, okay, this is ours. This is this is our ministry. This is our church. It's 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 not it's not uh, um, there's not a dictator saying, hey, you got to do this and you got to do that. Yeah. It's there's the freedom in Christ and and there's the freedom in the ministry that God is calling us to do. Yeah. And so uh, that that was really my experience, you know. And of course, the thing that I really had to start paying attention to um, the most was what I was saying and to who I was saying it to. Um, that that was something that that has been a huge lesson that I really need to watch my tongue. You mean like from the pulpit or just like in? Everyday? No, just just in in conversations and when problems would would arise. You know, I would think one thing and uh, instead of just saying nothing or yeah. uh, just listening. You know, I would blurt something out, and then I'd be totally wrong and just feel like a heel, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, that's that been a huge lesson as far as the, the the pastoring is concerned. And going back to the preaching, the cool thing about preaching is, especially if you're going to other churches, you can go to another church, wreck them out, give them, I mean, just slap them in the face with the Bible and walk out and let them clean it up. Yep. And if you made some, if you made some changes, God's blessings on it, if not— you know, I'm going down the road, but here, every, the way everything ties together as a pastor in the preaching and even the teaching to me is a different thing. Yeah. Uh, all of those put together, uh, you know, th- there's to be a pastor, you need to be a preacher. You need to be a teacher. You need to be all of those things combined. Yeah. And, um, of course, as, as we've said, or I, I know you've said it and is it's not about as a pastor it's not about how much you know it's about how much do you love them how much and when they start seeing that and start coming on board oh it's a beautiful thing yeah it's that old saying they don't care how much you know until they know how much Much you you care care. that's what it is yes sir yeah yes sir so so is that what blindsided you that's what you feel like you weren't prepared for is just kind of like how you had to watch how you interact with people or yes sir yes sir Yeah, yeah that to me again that's uh um that's probably one of the most difficult things because you, you know, you're you're the same way. It's like this is what I think, this is what I feel, this is what I know. Just lay it out. Yeah. And learning the weight um, of the pastor's words is 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 kind of difficult to understand that there is power behind a pastor's words. And, and yeah. And you know, the, just about every. You know, uh, Every chance I get, or when it comes across, it's like don't take my don't take my words for scripture. This is this is muddied water. You need to go to the word and see what it says for yourself. And I'm 
also have of the um, mentality of if you think I'm wrong, if you think I have misrepresented Scripture, you've got an open door. Come and talk to me. Let's let's figure this out. Yeah. And uh, in in God's country, there's been multiple that have done that, and I love that. That's where the growth happens. That's where the the understanding comes. And and uh, I hate to use the word trust, but because you know we we're all human, we're all going to fail, but we still have to you know try to do our best, I guess you can say, to accurately represent the Word of God. And when that happens, that trust starts falling in there. And they seemed, the, the congregation seems uh, more open and, and free to come and talk to me mm-hmm. about their disagreements and yeah. uh, misunderstandings or understandings of, of what the Scripture is saying. Yeah. Well, and that's where me, you and I have always been wired the same. Uh, you know, and I've, if you've known me for any amount of time, I never say arguing. I always say intellectually intellectual debating. debating. Yeah. And that <laughs> phrase was actually coined with this dude right here <laughs> because that people would see us and be like, man, are they arguing? But like we were having a time of our life, yes. you know, like going over scripture and yes. crossing swords. That's yes. another one we said, like, hey, crossing swords. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, but man, that is truly like how we glean scripture and sharpen each other is, is by tackling some of those tough things absolutely and and backing it up and and you know that's a challenge so if you're listening to this you're watching this and and you think you want to be a preacher or a pastor uh here here's a little gem i'll give you for sermon prep try not to say i think yes that sounds like something so small but if you got that in the back of your mind it's hard not to say I think. Yes. And we, uh, I don't, I remember, I think you were part of it, but we were going to try to do the deal where we wear the shock collars. <laughs> and every time we say I think, we were going to buzz each other. No, I don't think I was a part uh, of that. <laughs> well, maybe in a future podcast episode. Maybe, maybe, maybe. <laughs> uh, the I think episode. And there's going to be, there's better be some shock collars involved in yeah. that conversation. <laughs> yeah. But some, so what I do is like you're saying is like, that was pretty heavy on me too is that the pastor's words have weight and uh i always try to go to scripture but there are some things you know where you have to say like if you're asking me here's what i think yes sir and i and i'll always say and i got this from grady desmuke this is not a thus the saith, saith the lord. lord i use the same thing yes sir but here's what i think or here's what i glean from reading scripture yes sir so that is one of those things is you have to be prepared that you're words have a little more weight than what they did before once you step into that pastor role so man, yes, that's good and i think uh going staying on that that subject one of the things that that i have come to believe is that there's actually very few things in scripture that we need to be hard-nosed hard-lined on yeah there, there's you know we, we're going to talk about the death burial and resurrection of christ okay after that for the most part yeah a lot of the things that that Christians tend to argue about today yeah. are open to interpretation, and it does not. It it is not a salvation not issue. Not a salvation issue. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, and that, those things are fun to, oh, to yes. intellectually debate about. Absolutely. But yeah, that's another thing that we've ran into over the years is some people just go get so twisted around the axle on things that are not salvation yes, issues, and and it almost causes like a parting of ways. And I'm like, dude, we can still be brothers. Like yes, we, sir. we're we are both claiming christ as our lord yes, and savior sir. uh yeah no those are great points and you're and you don't get to see that as a preacher but as a pastor you get to see that a lot a more. lot a lot yeah. you have you know how many do you have in your congregation now what, six, 600 yeah as soon yeah. as you pruned me out of this place this sucker grew, exploded, exploded. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah you have and, and you end up what you end up with it seems to me is you you get those those clickish mentalities within the church, especially in a trying to fight is that clickish mentality of of well this is what I believe or whatever, and then you find the sounding boards mm-hmm. of those people. You know we could go into if we were to talk about say the rapture. Okay, well you got your pre-tribbers over here, and you got your mid-tribbers over there, and you got your amillennialists over here. I mean you you get these little groups, and it's like okay time out. You know let's. Let's look at Philippians where it says we're supposed to be locked arms. We're supposed to be uh, a team moving in the same direction. All this other stuff, man, we can we can argue and 
debate yeah. and talk about and learn from each other, learn from each other's perspective. Yeah. But that has absolutely nothing to do with, with the body of Christ or the brotherhood or um, yeah, for who sure. we are as a congregation. For sure. So, I, you know, I've never seen that. Like the click deal has came up, but I've never seen it like that where it's like over some little uh, nuance in Scripture that's not a salvation issue. Uh, I've had people come to me as a pastor and be like, hey, this group is a click or this group is yes, a click. Uh, but, man, like when I look at those things sometimes as I, as I try to point out to them, like the definition of a click is a group that you can't get into for whatever reason because you don't fit whatever it is. But sure. when I look around the church, what I see sometimes it's getting labeled as a click is it's like a life group. It's people that are doing yes, life sir. at the same pace. Like yes, sir. Keely and I were in one group, and then when we had kids, we were in another group. Yes, you know, like it just it changes by like what season of life you're in, and and so I see that around church. I've I've never seen it. Uh, Oh, I've, like you presented it. Yeah, well, I mean, it, that's a. Uh, I've I've seen it. And I've heard it. You know, like the, the, you know, the perfect example is 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 the the rapture situation where and and there's even churches out there that say you know if you don't believe in a pre-trib rapture then you're not you're not a Christian you're not on board with this. And, yeah, that's crazy. And, and we can see that even with uh, um, your different denominations that yeah. you know if you don't believe in what our our doctrine says, then you're not a brother. Yeah. And man, that's 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 really heartbreaking when you when you can match those doctrines up to scripture. Uh, and I agree with you that the the cliques being being life, just groups of people doing life together, that's to me is beautiful. That's that's mm-hmm. the way it should be, as long as it's not a you're exclusive. not a part of yeah, exclusive. You can't, get into, you, you it, can't yeah. get into it, right? Yeah. So I got to tell this story because you brought it up about the the pruning. So, uh, it as soon as I became the senior pastor at Riding the River, like because mm-hmm. that deal with Hondo had always been on my radar, mm-hmm. and it just God's timing, right? Mm-hmm. He opened those doors just right as I was, I was coming on as senior pastor, and so man, we jumped on it to like come alongside that. Oh, church we jumped on it. Jumped on it, <laughs> and uh, I remember. Because, you know, we speculated we were probably going to be like 70 families, 70 people that were would probably start going to church in Hondo. And uh, that did not bother me. Uh, but I had like one person, hey, are you worried about like the 70 or so people that are going down there? And I, nah, man, God's got it. But by like the eighth or ninth person that asked me that question, I was like, God, did I, <laughs> did I mess up here? Like, uh, man, I'm kind of starting to get some angst to me because like like nine or ten people have said that. Yeah. And then the first Sunday uh, that, that we kicked off with you down in Hondo, we were, we were 120 over our normal congregation size here with uh, over 100 being down there. Yes, we were there over 100, their normal. Yeah. Their normal. Um, well, it just goes back to the deals. Like, just trust God. Like, God put that vision on you. God put that desire on you. And and I started to let the world creep in a little bit and cast some fear, some yes. doubt there. And I pushed it back. And like, man, God totally showed up and and uh, relieved me of that fear. So I was like, well, I didn't fall on my face. <laughs> it's my first act as a senior pastor. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was. It was. Uh, it was definitely, I'd say intimidating, but it was, you know, I was scared. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I was scared because, because of the realization of what, what I didn't know and what I was getting ready to yeah. have to embark on, and that's, uh, and like you said earlier about being as prepared as I, I could be. I, I honestly believe you're correct on that. And, yeah. But but that being said, uh, what you and even Jeff, what y'all have done to support me and, and being there to answer my questions and and give me the well, you know, that's just the way it is, Ty. You know, that that is that has been a comfort and a, a blessing on, on me and my church and oh, my family, man. what yeah. y'all have done. Yeah, yeah. Well thank you. I appreciate that. But you've been just as much of a blessing to me too. <laughs> and I know I know even Jeff would say that if he was here. Yeah. Uh so I want to shift gears. I want to talk about what's going on down at, at uh, God's Country Fellowship. Uh, 
on the last podcast I shared about like anytime we go to a men's retreat or some kind of multi-church gathering and you've seen it that we all get that deal right the cowboy church the is, cowboy church is that a real church you know like and <laughs> it, it doesn't bother me the way it used to be but the the number one feedback I've got since you've been in Hondo is people that have showed up and they were expecting something hokey. Yes, sir. And they've been like, "Man, that this is the realest church I've ever been to." It's it's they are preaching the Bible in its entirety, heavy on the gospel. Yes, sir. And, and not only that, you're not only teaching it, but like you guys are living it out. And and that's what we try to do here at Riding the River. And I think that's what's made the Cowboy Church model. It's not so much the name, but it's the model of the church because. It's just off of the book of Acts, like the way they're doing church. And uh, so that's a lot of feedback I got, which that's a great compliment to you and your leadership down there. But, man, tell with us, share with the audience, like what's God doing down there? What kind of vision you guys got for the future? Oh, we got big dreams. We've got <laughs> real big dreams. Um, uh, right now, we're, we're if the 80-20 rule is, is true for churches, which is, uh, at eighty percent of the capacity, the church kind of stalemates. It, it, yeah. it doesn't grow anymore. Just yeah. people are uncomfortable. Well, yeah, it falls off. It 20%. falls off. Yes, yeah. and if if that is true, we're over eighty percent. Yeah, uh, we've pretty much. Uh, I think the average last month is about a hundred uh, every service, and that's about as many people as that little building can. Can well, hold. Well, that's the deal. That building realistically, comfortably holds about eighty, right? At, yeah. 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 Comfortably. Comfort. Yeah. yeah. After that, it's 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 tight. You know, just walking from one side of the yeah one side of the building to the next, or going to the bathroom. You know, you're you're walking sideways plenty of times. Um, so right now, our our dreams are are to be able to get a new address, get someplace that is uh, more more visible, and and start that process. Uh, but something that I've come to realization. To especially this past month or so, is I would prefer to have a hundred Christians that are digging into the Word and doing what they're called to do, living the life that the, uh, Christ has called us to live, than a church with a thousand seats that are just have a bunch of seat warmers yeah, on them. being held down, held, hold, held, holding them down. I, I believe that um, with that mentality. One, the the kingdom is going to grow. Uh, the The kingdom is going to be effective in exponential ways. Yeah. Um, and then the rest of the growth will come. Uh, I believe that um, God is letting us go through this time of being kind of cramped up uh, to to grow us to to get us more mature to where when we do take that step or if He ever gives us that that opportunity that we are going to be mature enough and, and uh, good enough stewards or good stewards to, to handle that task. Because as you know, it's not, it's not an easy undertaking. And if, plus you have a limited amount of people taking on a massive, a massive uh, uh, project and having the idea, oh, if we build it and they will come, that's not a good biblical, no, not a good biblical mentality. So our our dreams, of course, are to be able to uh, have enough land in a, a building to accommodate uh, the growth of the church, plus to be be able to take on other ministries like our um, our food ministry and and ways to incorporate uh, the ranchers that we have in our church and the farmers we have in our church to be able to provide. Uh, food for those who need it and clothes uh, and plus all the other ministries that are just a lot of fun too so yeah but yeah that's that's our plans and uh, as far as what's happening there man god be the glory i mean it, it is it has been amazing to me to see men that just a year ago were sitting in the corners not wanting to say anything that are now are stepping up and taking ownership of it they're taking uh, uh, ownership of bible studies and saying hey i'll do the talk and they are on point you can tell that they're they've they are looking to see what what the word says it's not just a uh 
an allegory to to a, a scripture that they heard somewhere else, and oh, we're going to make it look like this. This no, they're they're digging into the Old Testament. They're looking yeah. everywhere to to make sure they're on point. And to me, that has been a blessing that that I can't I can't describe. And then on top of it, even even the uh, the ladies stepping up and and taking ownership and wanting to do things and I mean it's just what, what do you say to that and uh, I've heard more than once people go man Ty you're doing a great job you're doing man you're doing great I, I can tell you what I know Ty it ain't him doing it yeah you know it, it's not it's not me because I know what what a screw up I am. Uh, and but to see God's word, you know, what's the scripture that God's word never returns empty, and it's not. I mean, the fruit has been yeah. unbelievable. Yeah, it's cool to watch. Too. Oh, it's unbelievable! I, I I sit back in awe. We we had a uh, a meeting the other night, and one of the men did the deal, and uh, I hope he listens to this because he's borderline preacher. Yeah, and on point, and just beautiful. Yeah. And, and to sit back and just in awe and go, wow, yeah, look what God is doing. Well, you said you don't know what to say, but you said it at the beginning, to God be the glory. To God and, be the glory. And, 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 you know, when we visit other churches and, like, the things you read online, we hear the story all the time, right? We can't get men to step up. Yes, sir. And, man, we have been blessed beyond belief. I know here at Riding the River, I mean, there's two men for every job, every hole that could be filled and I get asked all the time, like, what are you doing to, to make this happen? And I'm like, it, it, it's nothing yes, sir. I'm doing. Like, we're just encouraging, equipping, and making room yes, sir. for them to step into leadership. And I'm, and I'm glad you went that direction talking about it. And we can see, you know, your excitement about what's happening down there. Uh, but you have some incredible young leaders coming up uh, down there at Hondo. Yes, sir. Uh, you've got an elder that I would fight you in the streets for. <laughs> you know what? You, you're yeah. going to get in trouble with my wife because every time we come up here and you make a comment, she's that Jeremy, that Jeremy. Oh, you need to cut that well, out. Well, Tony Dupont, if you're watching this, <laughs> you're I the mean, man. The Hill Country is beautiful. I'm just saying, you got, don't uh, listen to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you, you guys have a a bright future. Uh, we're praying for that ministry down there. We're praying that you guys do get some new real estate because you're kind of tucked and hidden right yes, now sir. Yes, sir. and uh, a new building. And I think you're going to fill that up. And, you know, it was like, uh, it's just crazy when you can look back and you can see God moving all the pieces into place. Absolutely. Uh, because like I pastor here in Bandera, but I actually have a Hondo address too. And when we went from Medina to Hondo, our kids were at the school there in Hondo. So we were trying to, get involved with the community there too. And I remember going to one of those school deals and I'm just looking around at the parents and I'm like, all these people are from our culture and 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 they don't have a church like we have yes. in Bandera here. And it was literally like two weeks later, we get the call. And and, and we'd been praying about coming alongside that church in Hondo for, for a few years. And, uh, you know, you were right there, probably going to take the job pastor in the church in Smithfield. Oh, I was, comp- I, was uh, I, cons- I consider it to be in like Abraham. I had the knife up. I'm yeah. Like, we're just going to, yeah. we're going to kill the situation here. We're going to pack up no matter what it takes. We're just going to go do yeah. it. Yeah. That we were prepared. And then. It, it, it's just an awe moment though. Like yeah. to look and see how God was moving all those pieces, like putting that desire in your heart, putting that vision there putting the people in place before yes, you even knew you yes, you needed them uh, but but you got to be bold enough and and uh, courageous enough and have enough faith to act on it when it comes and man God is blessing that you got to be able to take that step yeah you know I was thinking about that you know even you think about the Israelites when they had to go through the Red Sea mm-hmm. could you imagine having to take that first step seeing water stacked up on either side of you and you got to take that step yeah but the thing that Again, like uh, that has really been impressed on me this past year is you just st- stay steady. You look at the, all you got to do is take that step in front of you where the Lord is leading you. Yeah. Don't worry about to the left. Don't worry about to the right. Yeah. And again, he he will go before you. He's 
he's done it multiple times and to to actually get to experience that is how do you describe that yeah that's pretty good well so i want to start winding this down but uh before i pray us out of this so if you if you had a doesn't even have to be a young guy, just anybody right now that feels like they uh, God's putting a call on them to go into pastoral ministry. Uh, what what's one golden nugget you'd give them? Ooh, man, that's a tough question. That's a tough one. One golden nugget. Yeah. Um. Man. You know, I heard a, I heard a, a a preacher talking about this not too long ago. That he said that when he was in seminary, that they had an old preacher uh, come in and and talk to the talk to the seminary class, and he was in tears. The old preacher was, and he said something to the effect that when he was going through seminary, they knew they were called by God to be preachers, to be pastors. And no matter what happened to them, no matter how poor they became, no matter what situation they come across, they were going to be, they were going to be faithful to that calling. And he was crying because the pastors nowadays, nowadays, they're not faithful to that calling. They want to be a pastor as long as they're making X amount of money, yeah. as long as the congregation is good, as long as X, Y, and Z. They, they, everything has to be perfect for them. And if it's not, they're willing to step outside and go, well, I guess I wasn't, or maybe I'll be a pastor later on or when things get better. And I would say I would say to anybody that was that is thinking that God is calling them to be a pastor, one, study, 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 and then study some more. Pray, 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 pray even more. But don't quit. When things get rough or the enemies seem too great, man, you got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. you got to pass through that Red Sea. You've got to go through the wilderness. You've got to do those things. And you got to have the grit. Uh, so be gritty. That's really good. Gosh, that's deep. My, I, I, mine, I've used it many times, but I got it from Dale Lee, and I, I don't quote me on it. Dale, you can call me, but I think he pastored in Orange, Texas. He was a pastor for 20-something years, but I sat on the pastor processing board with him, and I heard him say this, and I kind of stole it from him, but he said, if you can do anything else, do it. <laughs> but if you're called to pastor, you won't be happy doing anything you else. You cannot do anything yeah. else. Yeah, and that's that's what I've I've experienced. And you kind of touched on that when we started this out. Yes, is sir. like you got to a point where like that's all you wanted to do. Yes, like sir. that's all you could think about. And uh, and that's the difference between a calling and a job. Is absolutely. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I think of you know outside the church you know for the majority of my adult life i've had the perfect little boy's life yeah you know like when i was in the fire department i was playing fireman for 24 hours and then i was playing cowboy for 48 hours i mean i was taking off my taking off my fire helmet and putting on a cowboy hat and going to work yeah and looking back now or even looking at my life now i mean i is to a lot of people they're probably jealous of what i get to do for a living as far as playing cowboy or catching catching deer and uh, other wildlife and man it's just not that for me anymore that it's like yeah. I, I would rather I would rather do this I would rather talk to somebody mm-hmm. I would rather be able to help somebody out than go get on one of the horses I got yeah and you know I've seen your horses that's not a hard choice to make I mean I'd rather go do it <laughs> <laughs> No, but Ty, man, I want to thank you for being here today and just, uh, and once again, thank you for the fellowship I've had with you and thank you for answering that call that God's put on your life. And I know he's going to bless that ministry down there and he's going to keep using you in bigger ways. Thank you. And yeah. thank you for, for being a brother through all this. And man, I'm looking forward to doing this some more. Yeah, no, it's yeah. fun, man. Yeah. Well, guys, uh, I want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked what you saw, 
Uh, you can find us online at ridingtheriver.com. Uh, like and subscribe. I think we're on Spotify now. I'm going to give a shout out to our production crew that I keep forgetting about, Mr. James Hampton. And we got Desiree Bowie back there today. Uh, better yet, come visit us in person on, on a Sunday morning. We got two services, one at 8 and one at 1030. You can find Mr. Ty Fitzpatrick online or on Facebook at God's Country Fellowship and go see him, pay him a visit. So yeah, let me pray. Father, we thank you for this time uh, just to sit up in here in this room, Lord, and talk about what you're doing in our lives and and just, uh, man, a topic of what it, what it means to be a preacher versus a pastor. And I thank you for Ty. I thank you for his ministry and for him taking the time to be up here this day, Lord. So we, we pray for the Hondo Church, Father, for God's Country Fellowship, uh, uh, that you make a, a place for them uh, with some new real estate so that people can see where they are and what they're doing, Father, in, a, in a, a building. And just like Ty said, in your time, Father, because we pray for you to grow us, not just in number, Father, but in spiritual depth and uh, and grow us into a deeper understanding and more in love with you every day. So, Father, we love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. We'll see you. When he rolls up his sleeves, he ain't just putting on the reds. Our God is an awesome God.